what exercise has the best carryover to my squat or my deadlift? How many sets per muscle group per week should I be performing in my training program? These are the myopic questions people get lost in way too early when they go to create a program for themselves. What I'm gonna do in today's video is I'm gonna actually offer you guys the theoretical framework to create an optimal program for yourself. Now, before we dive into this video, in a couple weeks time, I'm gonna be releasing a video covering self-coaching. What you need to understand, and this is a little foreshadowing, I personally believe in the bottom of my heart that most people should not self-coach unless you absolutely have to because of financial reasons. There is a reason every high-level bodybuilder and powerlifter has a coach. Clearly, Chris Bumstead knows what he's doing. Bob Matthews and some of these high-level powerlifters, they know what to do in the gym, and yet, why do they have a coach? There's two reasons. One, you're your worst analyzer. We are really bad at self-analysis. This is why the Greeks famously had the aphorism, know thyself, because most people live in some egotistical view of themselves and do everything incredibly wrong for themselves. But the second reason that's way less philosophical is you just don't have the experience experiential knowledge or diversity yet in order to coach yourself. And what I mean by that is when I started my coaching paradigm and, and really figured out how to do everything, I came from a background of a huge amount of different coaches. Alberto Nunez was my first mentor. You guys have seen me as of late with Dylan Smith and everyone in between there from Dan Green to Ben Escrow to Zerdos to Eric Bodhorn. I've either worked with these people one-on-one -on -one or I've gone through some experience where I learned from them almost in like a mentor-like setting when I was training out of Dan Green's gym and able to speak to him on a daily basis. That gave me such a diverse experiential knowledge, a participation in something beyond just theory that actually allows me to be a better coach for myself and for my lifters. Most people don't have that yet. So I would encourage you to reach out for coaching. I am actually taking on clients right now. So this is a shameless plug. If you are looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching that is really transcendent beyond our basic bare bones, Zoom and email check-in type coaching systems, if you want something that is gonna completely transform your knowledge base and your experience as a lifter, hit me up in the description box. Now, with that said, and with that out of the way, let's get in how to actually create a foundation for your own program for those people who won't take my advice, <laughs> because I know there's a lot of you guys, and I like talking about this stuff. So what we first need to do is actually ask ourselves a hierarchy of questions in descending order. The first question you need to ask when designing any kind of program is how do I do the most total work with the least amount of incurred fatigue? Most people think programming is about fatigue. They think, oh, the more I burn out my biceps and fatigue them, or the more I just trash my squat, as long as I can recover from it, I'm good to go. This is not the case. Fatigue has nothing to do with growth. Stress does. So you can fatigue the hell out of your biceps doing sets of 30 on bicep curls. They are gonna be dead for days at a time, but that's not optimal for growth. We all know that. So really what is optimal for growth? Well, it's a specific kind of stress, AKA workload, and the more work we can generally do with in a certain repetition and or intensity zone because it needs to be specific to the task at hand, the more of a better outcome we're gonna have. So by fundamentally asking ourselves that first question, a second question actually comes out, which is what is the current work capacity of my central nervous system, my connective tissues, my muscular system, my lifestyle, like how much can my life right now handle as far as training frequency and volume goes and how many days I'm in the gym, my mindset, you have to ask yourself all of these areas, otherwise you're gonna bite off more than you can chew or actually work too little. Now, once you've determined these answers, or even if you haven't fully determined it yet, you can start to see a program flesh out. So let's take a look at the deadlift individually, and really I think you wanna go through this by the big three lifts, if you're a power builder or power lifter, or by muscle groups, and you're gonna kinda of choose exercises that choose those muscle groups and ask yourself these questions. So let's look at the deadlift as an example. If I want to deadlift, I first need to determine, should I deadlift once or twice a week? 
Most people aren't gonna deadlift three, four, or five times per week, so I'm gonna keep this really practical. Yes, you can do that, but we're gonna keep this video practical. So one or two times a week, well, ask yourself this, how much can your muscular system handle versus your connective tissues? If you're in a state where your connective tissues are a little hot, maybe from overtraining, from a powerlifting meet, or you're actually just really detrained and they can't handle that much right now, even though they might seem fresh, you probably should air towards one time a week. If you're someone whose connective tissues are solid, your CNS is in a really high capacity state, you've done a work capacity phase, you're going into a strength phase, then you can probably handle deadlifting twice a week. So what you wanna do is first determine that. Now here's the kicker, they actually don't even necessarily need to be looked at as more work or less work. You can have this example here where you do three sets of competition deadlifts on a single day, followed by two more sets of stiff-legged deads, that would be five total sets of deadlift work, as where you could also just split that up into two days where you have three sets of deads on one day, two sets of deads on the other. So it isn't even necessarily assumed that more frequency is more work, but generally you only wanna increase frequency when you need to increase uh, your total workload or when you wanna split it up so one acute session is a little bit longer or shorter than another. Okay, so that's kind of where you start as far as frequency goes. The second thing you want to do is then ask yourself, how do I accumulate that much work on an individual training day? So let's say we're deadlifting some heavy competition deadlifts. You could do a top set of maybe for you, that might be 635 pounds for a set of three, and then some back off work at maybe 555 pounds for two more sets of three. That would be a total workload of 5,235 pounds. But here's the weird thing. If you don't do a top set like most people do, you could instead kind of meet in the middle and do 595 pounds for three sets of three. So you're doing the same amount of sets and you're actually going a little bit lighter than your top set, but a little bit heavier than your back downs. And now you've accumulated 5,355 pounds of total work, meaning sets times reps times weight, okay? This is gonna be more total work but it's gonna be a little less specific to powerlifting. So you have to ask yourself, do I need some top end work right now or more total work and work capacity, right? And so now your training day individually starts to form a shape. Most people just wanna jump straight to the top sets. Currently on my deadlift day, I'm actually using this example for myself. I'm not doing top sets on deadlifts. I'm doing straight sets because it's a way to get in more total work and I'm in a state of detraining where I don't need a lot of top end exposure right now. That will come later once my baseline is built. So you see these questions of like, how much can I do? Like, how can I do more work with less total fatigue starts to come into play because why a top set of deadlifts at 635 pounds is gonna fatigue the shit out of your central nervous system. It's gonna be way more taxing and it's actually less total work if you have to do back downs then that are a little bit lighter versus maybe doing straight sets, I can recover a lot better. And that's really how you should approach work capacity phases. But you might actually be in a state where you can not only handle that top set, but maybe even handle more back downs, albeit a little bit lighter, and actually still accumulate more work. So you have to ask yourself, what's your state of your capacity? And then in that scenario, how do I do more work with less fatigue incurred? Because fatigue only holds back your training. You need a lot of stress, and yes, stress and fatigue are kind of intercorrelated, but the goal is stress with less fatigue, which is very possible if you approach this training the correct way. Again, if I'm doing that top set that's really heavy, that's gonna be a high RP set and that's gonna be very taxing. It's gonna have way more fatigue to it than doing a few extra sets of a moderate weight. What's up, Prime Fam? I'm in the middle of a workout. Now, I don't mean to interrupt this broadcast for some sexy, juicy, OnlyFans free content for you guys. What I wanna do is real quick talk about our sponsor of the channel, Barbell Apparel. Guys, not only do I love this company because they take care of me and this channel, but I also really love their clothes and I actually genuinely mean that. Today I was just training while I was pulling some really heavy deadlifts in their fitted drop hem long sleeve, which is by far one of my favorite items on their website. These things actually fit hugged and molded to your muscles. So when you're training, you can actually show off all the gains that you make in the gym. I cannot stand these other pandering companies that design everything for 20 year old frat boys. Now, if you're a 20 year old frat boy, cool. But if you're a grown man and you don't wanna wear oversized baggy tees with tiny little 
shorts and the typical bobby socks hanging out of your new coolest Jordans. And you actually want something that makes you a little bit more sophisticated while still having that edge. Barbell Apparel's for you. Now, we also got a uh, sale going on. $99 on all their pants and jeans. These jeans, guys, and even their pants, their chinos, are insane. You can literally squat in them, do a full workout, and they won't stretch out. They actually keep their shape and size, and the cool thing is, is you can buy skinny jeans, you can buy slim fit jeans, you can buy straight leg, they have an athletic fit, they have all sorts of different fits, and it's only $99 right now, which is incredibly cheap for how high quality these pants are. And I promise you, whether you get the fitted drop long sleeve like I had today, or whether you get their pants, you're gonna see this will last a lifetime, and the reason you can know that is they have a lifetime guarantee on their pants and chinos. So if you buy anything, and at any point it gets destroyed, ripped, a hole appears in it, they will replace it, no questions asked. How insane is that for them to back that pair of pants for a lifetime? It shows you the quality. Now, without further ado, back into the content of today. Now, moving on from there, once you kind of have the frequency sets and like how you're gonna do each individual day, we can then start to examine the body from a leverage standpoint, because a lot of you guys are power builders. Just simply ask yourself this, what three muscle groups do you need to work on the most? Why? Because you can't train your entire body and try to bring everything up at once. You can slowly creep up the whole body, but generally you wanna choose two to three muscles that you really wanna focus on in a training program and go after those. Once you've established what those muscle groups are, then you can start to formulate the other training accessory exercises or even the other training days and how those are all gonna be laid out into a working split. Once we do that, then we can actually ask ourselves about frequency of the whole body and the split that best suits the answer to these questions. So really you wanna ask all these questions on individual exercises. So when I create a program, I don't actually think about the training split first. I think about deadlifts, okay, how many times per week am I deadlifting? And like, how am I gonna do those days? Then I think about my squat, how am I gonna do those days? Then I think about my bench press. Now that's the foundation of someone who's a power builder or power lifter. And then from there, I start to choose the accessories and other days and how I align the whole program. But it's formulated actually off of those initial questions on the individual lifts. Even if you're a bodybuilder totally, which I don't think many people on my channel are, you can actually do the same thing, but instead of asking those questions in regards to exercises, ask it in regards to body parts. Do you see how this works? So you don't wanna actually think what's the most optimal split. That's where everyone always jumps. Or how many sets should I do? You can't jump there because you don't know because you haven't asked yourself about your work capacity. You haven't asked yourself what's the best way based on that work capacity to get in the most work with the least amount of fatigue incurred. Once you do that, then your own split starts to come out rather than asking yourself, is five days a week better than four? Is 10 sets on biceps per week better than 15? Those are just arbitrary, random things and numbers that you're throwing out. You need to decide off your own individuality. And this is how you create a kick-ass program. Now, in future videos, I'm gonna be covering a bunch of other topics surrounding self-coaching. I look forward to chatting that with you guys. But again, if you're interested in getting some coaching for me, please sign up in the description box down below. I do wanna stress that my coaching system is very holistic. It looks at everything from lifestyle to mindset and execution. And I actually give psychological training as well as biological training. And when I say psychological training, I mean I'm gonna be coaching you on certain contemplative visualization and meditative practices in order to further your training. I'm also gonna be coaching you on what I call environmental factors, internal and external, setting up your lifestyle to optimize your lifting and then creating a program around this. So if that kind of coaching style interests you, sign up in the link down below. If you wanna to learn to coach yourself, this is the start of these videos to do that as well. Catch you guys in the next one.